do you want to know a really simple method that many top players and coaches like Thierry Henry and Thomas Tuchel use and manage to improve specific aspects of the game? Well, that is exactly what we are going to discover today. And I'm of course talking about limitations here. Now, for those of you that don't already know from our previous videos, limitations are used to instill a new habit of reaction or to reduce the frequency of a quote-unquote bad one. So some while ago, I was listening to a podcast episode hosted by Jamie Carger with the Ari Henry being the guest. Now on that episode, Henri was reflecting on his career and his overall development at Clairefontaine, the training ground and youth talent center of the French national team. The number one thing that stood out to me was how his coaches were using limitations in training. Henri was basically saying that the coaches at Clairefontaine were really strict and once they noticed a player with a bad habit or an exceptionally strong game aspect, they would place limitations on the player that reinforced the solution to the bad habit or one that didn't allow the player to use his strongest skills. Now for Henri, speed was his hex factor, the aspect that helped him stand out from the other players. So the thing his coaches did was not allow him to use his speed in training. The fascinating thing was the individualization behind that. Basically, every player would be limited to something. If they failed to stay in line with it, punishment was given. I also once remember reading an article about Thomas Tuchel wrapping tennis balls around his defender's hands at training to limit their use in physical battles or altering the shape of the pitch to force a specific attacking style. Another use of limitations that shows off how creative and open-minded you need to be as an elite level coach in today's game. Now all of that is great, but should every player use limitations? If yes, when and how should you use them? And overall, is there such a thing as too much? Let's find out. The first thing I would like to touch upon is when limitations can and cannot be a great tool. So as I've said in the beginning, if there's a specific habit that is lowering the quality of your performance or you seem to rely too much on a strong skill of yours, you might want to microdose limitations throughout the training week. On one hand, you want to use limitations to reinforce the more efficient solution and cut off a bad habit. And on the other hand, you're using limitations to stress a broader range of skills and thus become more versatile. And don't get me wrong, making your good skills great is non-negotiable. However, if you're relying on that area of your game too much, just like Henri was on his speed, what happens if you match up against someone that can beat that strength of yours? What happens if you step up a level and the only good thing about you was that skill? Just like Thierry Henry was on a speed limit to force himself to find more solutions than just sprinting past a defender on a straight line all the time, you need to stop relying too much on one skill and become more versatile. The youth Henri and his coaches at Clairefontaine knew he would face elite defenders that would read his game and either prevent or beat him in those high speed plays and therefore used that speed limit to expand his skill set. So yes, every player can use limitations. They are super effective. Having said that, it drives me crazy when I see 90% of coaches using the one or two touch limitation on every single player. That's where individualization comes into play. You or the coaching staff need to recognize what habits lower your efficiency on the field and what skills you're relying on too much. Then all you need to do is microdose that limitation to your training. Nothing special nor too excessive, just enough to get the desired results. Now because there are literally endless limitations you can set, adjust appropriately. Place a bigger emphasis though during possession games and two-sided plays because that's the closest you can get to game conditions. The last thing you want though is overuse. Do not limit your creativity and freedom all the time and make proper use of limitations. So just because you heard that one and two touch limits are good doesn't mean that every player would certainly benefit from them. In fact, those touch limitations might actually hurt them if used extensively. It is not about making something harder, but about working smarter. Having said that, you can play around with the frequency and the time you use those limitations. You can be super strict and use those limitations throughout the whole duration of the session, or you might as well start with freedom and slowly progress into them or vice versa. Remember, you are using limitations to increase your freedom through versatility. Don't eliminate their purpose by fully destroying your freedom. Now I mentioned Thierry Henry using a sprint limitation and Thomas Tuchel using tennis balls taped around his defender's hands to minimize their use and physical battles. Those are some great ideas, but for easy reference, I included 10 additional limitations that I came up with or researched in the description below. But of course, you can be creative here and create your own. Now, if you want to take this up a level, 
I would highly suggest you watch this video next. Until the next time guys, have a good one.